This section is gonna be talking about clinical pharmacology of the thyroid gland. So we always use some drugs when patients prevent, present with uh, different thyroid pathologies, especially hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism. Now hyper means something is doing what? Doing way too much than it's supposed to be doing. And that's what it's doing. It's the thyroid gland. So if there's too much T4 and T3 being produced from the thyroid gland, we need to stop it because there's clinical significance, right, of what patients are going to present with usually Graves' disease, right? They have like exophthalmos, pretibia, myxedema, but all these clinical uh, pathologies, we can actually control this mechanism by preventing the thyroid gland from overproduction of what? Thyroid hormones. So the first drug we're going to talk about is perchlorate. Uh, technique, okay? Now, these two drugs, the way they work is actually by inhibiting the trapping of iodine right at the entrance. Now, they, they basically, they block the iodide pump from reuptaking iodine into the thyroid follicles. So right here, actually, let me redraw that. This big step where iodine is actually reuptaken by the epithelial cells through the iodide pump, the anion inhibitors, anion inhibitors, and they inhibit the what? The iodine pump. So it's very simple. Every time the TRH is telling the TSH to make T4, T3, when it gets here and stimulated and TSH is coming here to say, oh, wait a minute, we need to make some thyroxine, the iodine that's necessary to be reuptake uh, by the cells, they cannot. And we can't do that. None of this pathway will ever exist, and we stop it. That's one. Now, the other drug we're going to talk about, which is even more useful than these two guys, is methimazole or propyl thiouracil. You need to know these two drugs because they're extremely important. The mechanism how they work is by inhibiting the organification, right, and coupling. So basically, who does organification and coupling? IPO, iodide peroxidase. That's why I keep telling you it's extremely important that you remember that enzyme because IPO right here does oxidation. It does organification and does the coupling to make MIT and DIT. So if we keep blocking all the steps, right? We block it from doing this. We block it from making MIT and DIT. We even block it from even oxidizing and making hydrodyne. We've literally blocked the entire pathway and we cannot make T3 and T4. Very, very easy. But what makes propithyroso even more fascinating is because it even goes a little bit further outside and prevents the peripheral conversion of T4 and T3. That's the difference between methimazole and propyl thyroxyl. Now, as every drug has side effects, you need to know the side effects. What are the side effects of these two drugs? Skin rash. A rash in the skin, a granulocytosis. Now, what does that word mean? It means low white blood cell count. So, when patients are on this drug, you need to constantly order a CBC, which is a complete, a complete blood count, to make make sure they're not neutropenic. Why do I care about that? Because these patients develop a fever, just a little fever, and they have an infection, they will not be able to mount an immune response, and they can get sick and die. 
So when patients are on these two medications, make sure you're checking the CBC because and checking to make sure they're not having a granule, right? A means no granulocytes, which are your neutrophils, which helps you fight off infection. So remember, we use these two drugs for what? Hyperthyroidism. And this are going to inhibit the organification and what? Also the coupling reaction that's needed to actually make thyroid hormone. And that's it, guys. It's very important that you remember that. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching Clinical Pharmacology of the Thyroid Medications. And have a great day. Bye-bye.